Hey friends, it's Lee Brown here and welcome back to My Kitchen, My Rules. Today we are going to continue our efforts to use up figs because I don't know what about y'all, but when you have a fig tree in the yard, oh, you pray for a harvest and then sometimes the Lord delivers and boy howdy do I have a harvest this year. I have got figs coming out my ears and I'll just eat them straight off the tree to be honest with you. You don't have to wash them or anything and I know some of y'all weird germaphobes are probably like, but Lee, birds might have touched it and bugs and stuff. And I will just say, you're missing out on life, friends. Y'all need to lighten up a little bit and quit living by fear. For heaven's sakes, quit using antibacterial all the time. You're destroying your immune system. But anyway, what I'm doing today, we're gonna make an apple fig custard. It's super good, but it's got a lot of steps in it. So this is kind of a high maintenance thing to make which is why I'm fixing it on Sunday, because Sunday is the day I like to fix things that are a little bit more steps, because you know, got to feed my mama and daddy. And so I'm buttering my bacon dish right now. So you get your two quart Pyrex here, or Corningware, or whatever you have in the house. And we're gonna have it buttered up. Now you could use Crisco if you want to, but because it's a custard, I actually prefer to use butter because I like the flavor. And then we're gonna get a little bit of our Dixie Crystal Sugar here and put a little layer on the bottom, not a heck ton, just enough to cover that butter up. And then we've got our oven going at 450 right now. And so that's what's working behind me, getting the oven ready. Now your bacon dish is ready. Let's set that over here out of the way in my not studio kitchen here. Then, and you see we got a lot of ingredients here. We're gonna have to have some dark rum. See, that's why it's a good Sunday recipe. We're gonna have some lemons. We've got figs, and I know that little label says peaches, but that's because this came from the grocery store and I use it now to pick my figs, and that's just handy or right, for sending the family down to pick them. We're gonna use a real vanilla bean. I had to hunt and hunt to find that at Lowe's Foods, but I found it like on the bottom shelf of the spice area. All my milk is covering up all my fine efforts here. Let's move the milk out the way. We're not gonna move the rum though. I might just drink some in a minute. I'm after church, you know. So we're gonna zest a lemon. And you know, this is one of those fun recipes because you get to use all the little kitchen gadgets that you own and that you don't use, but you have them and you won't throw them out because you think to yourself, well, self, I might need that one day. And so you hang on to it. And so actually, in addition to using our zester, today, friends, we're gonna use our corer, I mean, a peeler, whatever. And then we've got our core. See, you might even have one like I do with a little apple on the end. And you're like, I don't even remember what that's for, but there it is in your, utility utensil drawer. We're gonna get to use that in a minute as we fix some apples for this. And by the way, as you're thinking about what you're gonna to need to buy for ingredients, you need one big old fat lemon. We can take all the zest off of him. And you'll need about six ounces of figs or eight or 10, or frankly, however many you want. You know, it's your kitchen, your rules at your house. And this one, I'm gonna use probably more figs than necessary because I freaking love them. And I about got all the goodie off of this lemon, so it should be about plenty for the recipe. You need four big good apples, and you don't want soft ones. I like the honey crisp. Frankly, it's got my favorite texture and taste. And they're from Washington State, and so I will tell you something that my kids have learned from going to the grocery store with me. If the produce is not from the United States, we ain't buying it. And so right now, being summertime, I am trying to make as many fresh things as I can while all the produce is from the US so that we don't have to break my own personal rule. All right, now we got our zest. We need to get a little bowl, which I apparently did not lay out because I forgot. So get you a bowl. And then we're gonna take, move that milk out of my way again, move the figs. I'm just gonna keep shuffling for y'all's benefit. See, that's because I'm kind. Get you a half a cup of sugar. And of course, you know, if it's not Dixie Crystals, I don't know what's wrong with y'all by now. Y'all keep sending me these ideas for your other brands. I ain't having none of that. I'm a Dixie Crystals girl. And then we need to get our lemon zest, which would be right over here. That's not it here. I'll turn that over with my amounts on it because I like to look at the amounts when I'm baking, as y'all know. Oh, we need to put the zest in with the sugar. Oh, golly, that smells good. My hands are gonna smell good all day. Okay, now, get all of our zest. It's real juicy, too, that's a good, a good lemon. And then we're gonna get this vanilla bean, and you're gonna have to cut it open. 
And you're gonna wonder, Lee, why did I pay $7 when I can get vanilla out of the jar? I imagine you could do that, but the, the uh, fragrance is what we're going for here. So this is one of the recipes where I will splurge on the vanilla bean, but I reckon I should have opened the package before I started zesting my lemon. Lord, there we go, okay. And now we got to slice it open and get the fragrance out. All right. So you wanna kinda of cut that half in two. That should have been a fresh from Lowe's Foods. I don't know why y'all sold it. This little sad dried up one. Don't even say dried up. Well, we need the seeds out of it, but it's still fragrant. And so we'll just, we're just gonna make do with what we have. That's what we do in my kitchen, my rules. Lowe's, you sold me a dried up vanilla bean pod. You want a fresh one, y'all, because if you slice open a fresh one, you'll get the um, seeds out, and the seeds are where the fragrance is located. But what we're gonna do is what we have, and we're gonna get it busted up so we can get the fragrance out, and it's working. So now we're gonna massage it. You get to massage. Massage your sugar and your little vanilla bean pod here, and your zest, and you're gonna be tempted to eat it, and I imagine as I get this super fragrant, I'm now gonna pull out this dried up vanilla bean pod. If you had just the seeds, friends, from a fresh one, if Lowe's Foods had sold you one that was not hard as a rock, then you could have left it in here, but we're gonna pick this out so somebody don't break a tooth on it because then they're gonna have a dental bill and then I'm gonna have to pay it because they were at my house eating. And so at my kitchen, my rules, I take care of my house guests and friends who come over to eat. So let's get all of the busted up pieces of dried pot out of there. All right, that's super fragrant now. All right. Now, next step is gonna be, I'm gonna have to get my blender out of the appliance graveyard, so I'm just gonna have to take y'all to a commercial break because apparently I didn't plan right. I'll see you on a second. Okay, I have my blender now I can keep going because you needed a blender for something besides a smoothie. You need three eggs. So let's put three eggs in the blender here. And I know you're already thinking pictures of like those 80s Jane Fonda ads that they would like put eggs in a blender for something for the protein. But you know, we have protein powder nowadays, so you don't have to do this. But you will need it for a custard to have the right consistency. And these are the eggs that did not come from the grocery store. These came from my mama's chiropractor, Dr. Ted. I guess he has chickens, but that's where we get our, our good eggs from. They're all different sizes and shapes, which you can do in some recipes, but not in others. And so we're gonna get those, let's go to the puree in here. Isn't that pretty? Oh, look at that nice yellow. And then we are going to Let's see if they look like they're frothing up. Oh, they're frothy. So what you wanna do is actually leave it on a really low level. It should go ahead and work without jumping out. We actually want we'll to measure my milk first because I know I'm taking a real chance here on video to make a giant mess in my kitchen. You need two thirds of a cup of milk and recipe calls for whole milk, but I don't buy whole milk because uh, I won't use enough, frankly. We just use 1%, that's what we like. All right, please don't go all over the kitchen. <laughs> Dag nabbit it did. Well, I guess that's why I wore an apron today. Shoot. It's supposed to do that with the motor running. Well, let's figure this out. Let's just pour the milk in. Two thirds of a cup of milk. I'm glad I wore the apron today. I hope I didn't mess this blouse up. Some am gonna have to change clothes if I did. Well, we'll do what we do. And then we need to add in, let's see, our brandy or dark rum. The recipe also says you could use apple brandy, but I do not care to use brandy when I have the option of using rum, friends. And we need to get two tablespoons, which sounds to me like we need about a quarter of a cup. That sounds better than two tablespoons. But let's just pour that on in there. And I guess I clean an egg up out of my kitchen here in a little bit. Nothing like egg all over your kitchen. Woo! All right, let's stir that up. Now, we're gonna add in that beautiful sugar mixture that we made with your sugar and your zest and your vanilla. If you're lucky and didn't get a dried out one, you've got vanilla beans in it, but I got the vanilla essence in there. Let's mix that in. We'll just cover it up every time now. Mix it in. And then, we're gonna add 
We need a half a cup of all-purpose flour. And you know what kind of flour we use? What? White lily, that's right. We love white lily because it is the fluffiest of the flowers. I don't know what they do that's different, but put a half a cup in there. All right, let's put the lid on. Y'all, I can't even look around my kitchen right now. It's driving me nuts that I made such a mess. Let's mix that in. Now you're gonna start to see the consistency change a lot. Oh, it's looking so pretty now. Now you'll be going to drink it, but don't. I mean, that's not a great idea. I mean, I guess you could. There's nothing wrong with it, but I would not. And now we need some creme fraiche. Now, creme fraiche is a thing that you typically find overseas. We don't have a lot of it in the U.S. unless you go to real expensive grocery stores, which I don't because I'm not an expensive shopper type person. And so you see this, all right? So I want you to look at the consistency. See how it's kind of yogurty and a little bit gloppy that is beautiful so the way that you make your own creme fraiche is you take two tablespoons of buttermilk mixed into two cups of heavy cream you put it on the stove for just a few minutes you don't want it to boil or nothing just get it to like 85 degrees okay take it off the heat pour it into a glass and then let it sit overnight and that's how we get this beautiful stuff and it's so fragrant it's really nice and you need two-thirds of a cup of this no three-quarters of a cup of this so let's put it in here where we got that rum let's see and creme fraiche will keep for a couple of weeks it's um, you see that beautiful texture did y'all see that i mean it's it's just a dream and that's another one of the steps on this one that you had to plan overnight for it so if you're watching my recipe and thinking you can make it right now I mean, if you have some creme fraiche in your house, you could, but you need to make some overnight. And this, frankly, is another reason that I keep buttermilk in my refrigerator at all times. There's almost always a use for it. So let's mix that in. And then let's top it off with a wee tiny bit of kosher salt just to make sure that it balances itself out. So you need like a half a teaspoon of salt and you know we like kosher salt, so about yay much. Or a little bit more, a little bit less to your taste, but that suits my taste right there. Mix that in. And now we're gonna let it rest, okay? So now while our custard is resting, we're gonna do the rest of the prep. I'm gonna take you to a commercial break and clean up my work area before I lose my ever-loving mind, and we'll be right back. I might even have a sip of rum while I wait for y'all. Okay, so full disclosure, I stayed paused long enough to clean up this mess because y'all know that egg went all the way over here and got on my cupboard doors. And I imagine I'm gonna keep on finding it all over the kitchen. Of course, I just mopped and cleaned. Why does it always work like that? I don't know. So anyway, I told y'all you were gonna get to use your peeler. If you have one of these laying in your cabinet and you don't ever get to use it, get it out and peel your apple. It'll take you but a second. And I'm not going to try and be fancy like in Sleepless in Seattle. Do y'all remember that part where Tom Hanks was talking to his son about his dead wife and how she could peel an apple in one long strand? I am not, nobody's ever going to have that meaningful sad moment about me. I, they might not have any sad moments when I'm gone, let's be honest. But, you know, I'm just going to get the job done. It don't have to be pretty. It just has to get done. So once we get it all knocked off here, and apples are so much easier than potatoes. Potatoes are a little bit of a pain in the butt when it comes to peeling them. And what we're gonna do next to get your core out. So you've seen one of these things before. It's got the little serrated ends and looks so cute. So we're gonna take this and put it right around the top of the, where the stem is, and we're gonna drive it straight through. It's one of those good frustration releasing activities you can do and see shazam out comes the core and then we can ring this bad boy and here's what she's gonna do to ring it you're just gonna slice it <laughs> see i made it sound like it's gonna be something fancy and then if you want to be an old person in the 70s or 60s you can get you some cinnamon and some red food coloring and soak them up and have some of those apples that used to be on the salad bar over at the fish camp did y'all ever eat those apples they were the best we used to go to the fish camp on friday evenings and that was a good time and so you can see i also went ahead and peeled these apples i wasn't gonna make y'all watch me do this because i know that y'all just watch these videos for ideas and for uh, for commentary 
And today you got to watch me make a mess. Woo! It's like an all-in-one to get that core out there. If you leave a little bit of skin, that's all right, because I kind of like the, the flavor and texture of a little bit of apple peel, but not all of it. And I see a seed snook through there. I'm going to get rid of him real quick, because we do not care for seeds in our apple custard here. All right, he's out the way. And by the way, while you're peeling these up, it's always a good measure to have some fruit fresh which my grandma Thomas introduced me to a long time ago when they invented it, I guess. And that keeps your apples from turning brown while you're waiting on them. So I got a whole bowl full of apples here. And then before I start to peel in this last one, I'm gonna put my oven on. Over here, I have a saucepan with four tablespoons of butter in it. And we just use it here as Tita brand right now. And so we'll cut that on and get that melted. And you want to melt your butter until it turns brown this time. So you're not actually just going to use it to have in the pan. We want it to brown so we get that caramelization. Get that core out of there. And let's ring this one. And then what's going to happen is after that butter is nice and browned, we are going to take these apples and toss them in the browned butter which will make them amazing before we put them in the oven to get them roasted because we're going to roast these apples and that will make this so perfect and by the way before you ask me what thickness it's dependent on you and so i like mine to be thick enough to hold some of their texture i don't really like mushy apples if you are somebody who does mm, yum oh that shot in the lemon zest oh man i'm gonna have to create something with that Daggone. Seriously, y'all. Put some peeled apple over here in the zest. That was good. Okay, so anyway, we're going to let that butter brown. And then, let's check on it real quick. Let's move my camera so y'all can see. What? Hey, friends. Okay. I'm still here amazed by how good that is, that apple dipped in lemon zest. Let's get that melted. And then we're going to need a little bit more sugar, too. So, let's see if we need to know if there's a special amount I need. Let me check. No, add some sugar, a couple of tablespoons-ish, which means we can put in however much more we want. All right, so I'll just let y'all go about your business for a second, and I'll be right back. Well, actually, I'm still waiting on that butter to finish melting and brown, so you know what we can do in the meantime is we can prep our figs. So, when you're prepping your figs, take off the stems, and we're just going to slice them. And so you can see the inside. For those of y'all that aren't fig people, that's what the insides look like. It's just beautiful. And I really don't understand people that um, are scared of figs. And you can just pop it right straight in your mouth. Um, I know that's what she said. I know y'all were thinking that joke. Don't be so tacky, friends. This is a family production here. And so we're just going to slice them half in two. And that's all we're going to do. So, again, use as many as you want. Cut those stems off. Although, frankly, if the stem has gotten ripe enough, I will eat the whole blasted thing because I love, I love, love figs. There's just nothing better in the summertime, which is why the birds are always out there in my fig tree. And we found some deer tracks, too. They were trying to sneak up in there and steal my figs. And then we've got a plan now for that. We're going to keep the critters out. So, let's check our butter over here while we're slicing figs. And these are just ideal. And you could use dried figs for um, some recipes. I don't know if you could. I guess you could use dried figs for this recipe. Although, I usually only use figs when they're fresh, y'all, because that's how I roll over here. Okay, our butter is melted, not brown yet. And so, we won't add the sugar in until it has browned so that we don't mess with the, the recipe, you know, because some brave chef somewhere thought this up. And frankly, I'm just, I modify things more than create, but I am gonna create something with this apple and lemon. I'm not gonna stop talking about it either because now I've just dipped a fig into it. What's a fig taste like dipped in lemon zest? Let's see. Oh, also amazing. Of course, I can guess that because there's lemon in my fig preserve recipe that I've been using forever. Hmm. All right. Lemons and figs are friends. Lemons and apples. All right. Our butter. Oh, you hear it? Yeah, you hear it. Okay, so now we need like two tablespoons worth of sugar. 
That looks about right. And let's put in a wee tiny bit of salt too. So balance that out. A pinch of salt would be about yay much, so a little bit less. And stir that so it does not burn. You do not want your butter and sugar to burn, but you do want it to brown. Although, frankly, I would burn it because I like burnt things. Like when I eat marshmallows, I don't know about y'all, but I've got to cook it until it is straight up black and burnt. All right. Now, what we're going to do is take these apples and toss them in with our butter. Let's cut the heat off. We don't need to heat it anymore. So they can get a turn to be in the, in the butter. So let's lay the, change my camera angle here. All right, here we go. So let's put our apples in. And we're going to coat them. They're not going to cook in here, though. Okay, remember, you cut your oven on for a reason. Y'all are already wondering what in the world we're going to do with the oven leaf. It's been on for a while. I know, I know. And so we're going to mix these in here. Just kind of toss them around a little bit. Get a little bit of the butter mixed in. And then we're going to lay these out on my bacon pan here. Look, I'm just gonna, I need a different kitchen. I did not plan this kitchen around making a cooking show, but nobody plans for the pandemic. Just like nobody plans for the Spanish Inquisition. All right. So now let's get them in a single layer though, because one thing I know about this recipe is that uneven apples will make you sad. And we don't need any more sadness in our lives. No, and this is too much trouble. They're gonna be a mess. Let's just do this, get them all spread out here. And then do it the old school way to make sure your butter spreads out. Just kind of shimmy it back and forth on the tray. And now I'll see all these rings and I'm thinking about the pineapple upside down cake. And my mama was one of the things she could make. Let's see, if you know my mama, you know that cooking is not her number one talent. She has other skills in life besides cooking. Daddy always cooked when we were little. All right, so let's see, we got that. Even out, got a little bit of butter for everybody. Okay, now we're gonna put this in the oven and roast these bad apples. Put them on the top rack of like, the move your rack up to like the top third of your oven. And we're gonna roast them in there for about 25 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna finish slicing my figs. And then when you come back, we will have roasted apples and then we'll know what to do with all that custard that's resting and all these figs and all the steps, I promise, it's gonna be worth it. And as usual, I forgot to tell y'all about a little something you ought to know while you're roasting these apples. You need to pull them out about halfway through and flip them over so they can cook evenly. Do y'all, can y'all smell that from where you are? I'm pretty sure you can smell that through the camera. And by the way, I don't get a lot of reader questions. I mainly get uh, viewer commentary. And the commentary I'm gonna get is, Lee, this has a lot of steps in it and you are normally a very simple person, right? I did look up where I got the recipe from. This came out of Bon Appetit at some point. I found it somewhere. I've never taken that magazine, but I've been on their website times and I usually skip stuff because it has too many steps in it. But when it comes to figs, I'll try about anything to use them up while they're fresh and not have them go to waste. And you can't make this so many preserves, let's just be honest. Although this year I have so many that it's highly likely that the people who use me as their real tour for buying and selling houses are probably going to be getting fig preserves as a closing gift. So if you are in love with figs, I might just be your realtor. All right, so halfway through, let's throw these back in. And now you see that they're, look how pretty they are. See, oh yes, uh-huh. Now let's finish those up. All right, they got about 11 more minutes to go. And then when they come out, we get to put our custard together. And that's the fun part, yay! All right, the apples are done. And don't they look pretty? And now we're gonna change our oven temperature to 375. So be ready for our custard and get that adjusted. You wanna let these cool just enough. What are you fussing about? Okay. You wanna let these cool just enough that you can get them in and they won't ruin your custard. So we're gonna set them over here for just a quick second. And I know y'all are getting excited about this uh, pork shoulder here, but you don't get to know about this one. This is a secret recipe. I hadn't decided if I'm gonna make it yet for y'all to see about. But um, 
I know you saw that and you know how good that's gonna be. So let me cook that one for 30. And all right. That's just to get it browned up. All right, so I'll tell y'all that secret later if you need it. It's legit, like fall off the fork, ridiculously good uh, pork shoulder. You can use a butt too, but I'm using a shoulder today. All right, so now you need your pan that you prepped so long ago with butter and sugar. And then what we're gonna do is layer some apples in there. So we're gonna put them in our dish here and use a bunch of your apples, leave behind a couple of the prettiest ones. So your uglier ones, we're gonna layer in the dish here. Gosh, I guess I should move that closer so y'all can look at it. I know y'all like to look at things. You're like kids. I don't, ooh, that was still hot, Lord. All right, so I'm gonna leave my ugly ones in the bottom and take the pretty ones for the top. And you're gonna do the same thing with your figs. Save back a couple of the less attractive ones it's not that they're not valuable, but, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. And then get the whole bottom layered with apples here. And you'll be surprised at how quickly you cover the bottom of this container. And I think I'm going to leave behind about one, two, three, four, five of the ones with the best symmetry to them. You know, we're going to make this into a math class since school is starting back up. And then we're gonna layer in some figs. And it doesn't matter if they're up or down, that's up to you, frankly. I'm just gonna toss them in and make that a nice little layer here. And again, save a few of your figs for placing on top to make it pretty presentation. You know, now that I've told y'all that it's a, a Bon Appetit recipe, y'all know it's gonna to have to be very pretty because they're very fancy with what they do. And get these all stirred in here, nice layer. I like to make sure that the figs and the apples are pretty much evenly layered so that I don't have any bites that are going to be missing a fig or missing an apple. And that should just about get it. There's one more ugly fig. Let's get him in here. Okay. And that leaves me five apples and six figs for the top. Okay. Now we got the easy part done. Now we have the tricky part. Your custard's been resting over here on the counter. So let's get our very restful custard here. And we're going to carefully pour this over the top. And I'm not really know why we have to be careful. I guess just so it's even. So get this poured over everything. I know y'all can already taste this, right? It's gonna be so good. This is legit a really yummy recipe. And let's make sure this is evenly spread. A little froth from the top of the blender here. I like to make sure my froth is even too. And boom, there is the custard. And the last thing we're gonna do is take these pretty apples. Oh, that one's so pretty, it's stuck to the pan. I guess it ran out of butter over there. That's all right, top side looks good. We ain't gonna look at the bottom. All right, lay that across the top. And let's get this one. I really am having a hard time not just popping these right directly in my mouth, because I love a buttery, oh, that's pretty on the back side. Roasted apple. It will be apple season soon. I hope they've had a good year up in the mountains. I don't know. After that earthquake last week, I hope that didn't mess with the apple crop. I haven't heard any reports on that, so I imagine they had a right. Let's see, so we got our five. We got a pentagon. We got a pentagon of apples. And then let's put a couple of our pretty pair, our pretty figs on the top. Get those evenly spaced out. And then this is gonna go in the oven at 375. And this will bake until the custard firms up. And so that's gonna be in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 minutes, maybe 40, maybe 25, depending on your oven. Let me show y'all what it looks like before it goes in. Oh yes. And you don't need to cover it, by the way, if your Pyrex came with the lid, you can put it back in the cupboard. You don't have to wash it this time. And let's let her go. Ah, I'm so excited. This is going to be so good. And it's going to go really well with my pork shoulder that y'all don't get to know what we have in here. Ha ha. All right. In it goes. And then I'll see y'all at the end when you can see how pretty she is. And don't you wish you were coming to my house for supper? Because we'd be having a fancy evening over here. Okay, y'all ready to see how these one million steps added up to make an apple fig custard? What? Check this out. This is so pretty 
you could probably enter that at the county fair if we were still having county fairs in the era of COVID. Yeah, that's good fancy stuff. So invite somebody over for supper and feed them a good dessert and make sure you subscribe for more. And if you want a Dixie Crystals coupon so you can make this with good sugar too, put your name in the comments and we'll hook you up. We'll see you next time.